is our brand new project bike, the Husqvarna 701 Enduro. Now it's the first time that we've had a project bike at Knox Armour and I'm really, really excited to get the series going. So the first thing is, this is not a loan bike, this is our own bike, we purchased it and we're going to be riding it a lot this year. Now, at the same time, I absolutely can't believe that we're in the middle of coronavirus lockdown right now and we're not actually able to ride it. So just as a quick, um, I thought I'd put it in there, that all the riding footage that you'll see as part of this particular review were shot before coronavirus lockdown um, and they were part of our uh, Urban Pro Utility launch, which we shot with Jamie Law and some of the GoPro footage as well. It was all shot before the lockdown. So why the Husqvarna 701 Enduro? Well, for us, I think this is one of the most undersold motorcycles in the marketplace. And I think it meets a lot of people's needs. It certainly does us and the type of riding that we're gonna be doing. And I'll go into that a little bit more in detail. But over the last year or so, we've ridden quite a lot of off-roady type bikes. So we've done, uh, we've had two stroke Husqvarna Enduro bikes, pure Enduros. We've had WR250F four stroke Yamahas. Um, and with those bikes, absolutely loved them. But for our particular scenario, um, where you're needing to ride on the road a little bit more, we're really yearning after a key, some indicators, a bit more road functionality, to be honest, um, and a little bit more power for the road as well. And you know that's one of the benefits that this bike really has. And by contrast, adventure bikes, in our experience, at this point in time, are pretty hard to live with with the type of terrain that we're going to be doing. And while they're marketed very much as in, you know, hey, you can ride all over the Sahara Desert and all that kind of stuff, most people, in our experience, don't really take them off-road that much. And they're fine on fire trails and sort of basic off-road work. But you know, when you start chucking in unpredictable terrain and you know, steep inclines and rocks and bumps and, and mud and sand and all that kind of stuff and it gets un, a bit unpredictable, they're pretty hard to live with in our experience. With the adventure bikes, I just think that the margin for error is just really slim. You know, you haven't got to get it far wrong to be able to sort of knock you off balance and then they're so heavy by that point you've dropped it and most of the time I'm riding in on my own and I can just picture myself getting stuck in the middle of a mountain somewhere with a bike that I can't pick up and you know it just turned into a disaster basically and of course there's guys who can ride them out there as you see you see all the guys at the exhibitions who are doing the the sort of ex exhibitions basically on these adventure bikes and how to do them in really tight turning circles and stuff. Now that is incredible riding skills and the guys who are doing that are about one in, uh, probably one in 10,000 and it's on the back of years and years and years of practice. And could I do all that stuff? Absolutely. But I just know from my own experience with the mountain bike game, it's years and years of practice. And the margin for error on a bike like this, the 701 Enduro, because it's so much lighter, is, is, is much greater. The 701 Enduro is, I suppose you'd class it as a modern dual sport. It's 100, uh, 145 kilos dry. So it's quite a lot lighter than your typical adventure bike. For example, we've got the F850 GS at the moment. That's 250, so it's shaving uh, 100 kilos off of that. Um, at the same time, it's probably about 40, 40 ish kilos heavier than um, you know a pure enduro bike. So it is kind of in the middle. My experience so far is that it pretty much rides like it's in the middle as well. So just for clarification, the price of the bike in the UK is 9,799. So it's up there in terms of the price. It's quite an expensive uh, bike and the insurance quote for this, the team from Devit um, give us a, an insurance quote and that's 322 pounds from Mr. Average. And you can find all the details for that insurance quote in the description below. So what's it like? Well, so far, so good. Actually, I think the bike is absolutely awesome and it's totally what I expected it to be. On spec, it's a dual sport. So it's a perfect mix between um, an adventure bike and a dirt bike. And to be honest, it rides exactly like that. It's so much more nimble than any adventure bike I've ever ridden. It changes direction really well. It um, grips really well. It just rides off-road really, really well. At the same time, it's no enduro bike either. Um, and while there is a lot bigger 
um, room for error or margin for error than any adventure bike it's definitely not an enduro bike either that you can just chuck around in the same way there's definitely a compromise but for the type of riding that we're going to be doing or we're planning to do anyway um, it's about perfect for us but i'll say i'll put it out there right now for the type of stuff that we're wanting to do i definitely wouldn't want a heavier bike and on the road it's definitely not as refined as an adventure bike you don't get the big wraparound experience that you get with an adventure bike you know big plush um, heavy riding big lcd screen big uh, wind protection at the front heated grips cruise control you know you're kind of sacrificing a lot of this with the 701 enduro um, that's not to say that it doesn't ride well on the road but it's definitely not as a plush of experience that you get with a with a proper adventure bike like the f850 gs for example the suspension also feels quite a bit firmer than uh, an adventure bike it's which is obviously good from a competition point of view and if you're doing big jumps on it and stuff like that that's a really good thing um, but in terms of the road it's just to say it's not quite as plush as um, an adventure bike anyway but obviously we're going to be doing a lot more road riding on this bike so we'll, we'll let you know how she gets on so the engine included in the 701 is ktm's really famous and widely used 690 single cylinder it's the same one that we used in the um, vip pillen 701 same as the Svart pillen and i'm personally a massive massive fan of this engine so we could buy into this bike knowing that it's got a peach of an engine and 100 percent it's a cracker it has got some different characteristics however the gearing is a lot shorter so it's not as um, orientated towards driving at, at quite fast speeds i reckon probably 70 to 80 mile an hour is its happy place going much over that you're getting quite a lot of wind buffeting at that speed and the gearing is sort of like running out of uh, steam by that point it is definitely orientated the gearing towards more of an off-road um, thing but this this motor is a wheelie machine second gear power wheelies third gear clutch up it's an absolute wheelie monster and we're going to be developing that as well so what's different about this bike in comparison to a typical dirt bike is it does come with some rider aids so you've got abs and you've got traction control now your abs is either on or off and your traction control you've got two settings on road uh, that's the most interference so it's got quite a lot of anti-wheelie interference and it won't really let the rear wheel slip and then you've got off-road uh, mode which allows the front wheel to come up a little bit but it's a good safety blanket if you're still developing and, and so you want to like clear that puddle or something with a wheelie it's got a um, a good safety blanket basically so you're not going to get too high and it allows some rear wheel spin as well which is good for off-road but you know because this engine has basically got a load of grunt you're going to come out the corners wind it right on and that off-road mode is going to look after you uh, and then obviously you can turn it off as well now it is a little bit quirky how you turn it off um, because actually we well, went back to the dealer and said it was broken um, because it could not get the traction control off which we needed to 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 do all the stuff that we did for the um, urban pro utility shoot um, there is a bit of a um, a way to do it and you have to hold it exactly five seconds and then when you release it comes off so i'll put that in the video and you can see ha actually how you do do that um, in terms of off-road riding um, when i've gone off-road i've taken the abs off because basically when you are off-road and you're on some loose rocks and stuff it does interfere quite a bit um, and stops you kind of slowing down so i've taken that off and i've alternated between having no traction control on and with the off-road and i'm not quite sure which one i prefer yet so that's our first initial thoughts of the bike and as i said this is a project bike and we're going to be improving a couple of aspects to the bike as we go on but the first improvements we're going to be making is number one changing the tires um, now this bike comes with the tkc 80 continentals on and i think they're a really really top all around tire i mean we've actually got the same ones fitted to the gs that we've got at the moment and i think that tire on that bike is perfect 
really good on the road you're almost sort of like no compromise on the road because they do handle incredibly well um, and you know for the type of trails that you'd be tackling on an adventure bike they're pretty good you know far trails and stuff like that but you do start to find the limits as you get into the rougher stuff into the looser stuff i think we need a little bit more bite um, so we're going to be changing out the tires that's the first thing that we're going to be doing on this bike for something with a bit more teeth basically on the front and rear so the second thing we'll be doing on this bike is improving the protection and while most things on on it are tucked away that need to be tucked away and the handlebars are stuck out where they need to be i think it does need some extra protection i look at those engine cases and, and i think you know they're going to be expensive to replace i can't for the life of me think why this bike doesn't come with um, a proper hand guard it's a real frustration and you know what the first ride out i had an absolute nightmare because i was at the top of this mountain really really windy and i just parked it up and basically the bike blew over with a gust of wind and there was no damage on the rest of the bike but the front brake lever snapped the end off it straight away like that and you know it's so frustrating put some proper hand guards on it so we need to do stuff like that basically um, the other thing is about this bike is because it's not a pure dirt bike because you'd look at it and you think okay you know what i'll be able to get like you could a motocross bike let's get a, a new brake lever 10 or 15 quid or something well not so on this a brake lever for this bike is like 50 pounds it's very much falling into the adventure kind of segment in terms of the pricing for individual components so we're going to be uh, ensuring that we get it protected properly because you know replacing parts on this is is not going to be uh, super cheap or 130 quid for plastics or something like that it's going to be a lot more expensive so we need to look out for it and the third thing that we're going to be doing is getting rid of that absolutely god-awful witch's finger that's coming out the back of it and holding the registration plate definitely something needs to do with that and i understand why that's on but that's going to be one of the additions that we make um, the final thing that we might do we might actually change the look of it as well and i'd be really interested to hear what you guys think in the comments so please let us know whether we should change the way this looks you know uh, style it up a little bit more how do we make this into an ox bike and to be fair we might actually think of a couple of more things to change and maybe you can let us know in the comments what you think that we should change this bike actually at this moment in time and i have heard people kind of complain about the size of the exhaust i don't think we're really that interested to change it i can see us kind of getting it scratched up a bit um, and you know there's little point really in us investing in a new exhaust system when we're going to get it all scratched up and actually do you know what it sounds really good as standard so i'm pretty happy with it as it is but let us know if you think if you think that we need to change anything else on the bike so i hope you've enjoyed that first little look at our project bike the 701 enduro um, i'm really excited to see where this series is going to go i'm excited for the changes that we're going to make i'm excited for the riding that we're going to be doing and um, it's just going to be exciting to see how it develops assuming that we get out of lockdown at some point this year so look hope you've enjoyed that please like please comment please subscribe to the channel if you're not already and click that notification bell as well that'll just notify you when a new video comes out and we'll see you next time